Flow and Apex both offer solutions that will allow you to execute logic asynchronously for use cases like requiring separate transactions or making external callouts or having transactions that will simply take too long to complete. For Apex, we recommend implementing asynchronous logic inside of a queuable class. And for Flow, we recommend using the run asynchronously path in an aftersave flow to achieve similar results in a low-code manner. And when deciding between a low-code and a pro-code approach, a key consideration is the amount of control that Apex will give you around callouts. Flow offers a fixed number of retries and some basic error handling via a fault path, but Apex has a lot more flexibility. And for a mixed use case, you can call system.enqueueJob from a queuable Apex class and make it an invocable method, which you can then access from a flow. When you're designing a solution that contains asynchronous processing, it's important to think about the entire process end to end and think about all the different scenarios you might encounter and how you're going to handle them. So, for example, if you have to make an external callout to another system, what happens if that system isn't available or if there's a timeout? Or what if the system returns a value that isn't valid? And thinking about how you're going to handle those different cases will help you determine whether you should take a low-code or a pro-code approach. To learn more about this topic and to read best practice guidance for a variety of related scenarios, check out our Architect's Guide to Record Triggered Automation. It's available on the Salesforce Architect's website, and I also added a link to it down below. So make sure to take a look at that, and I am looking forward to seeing you next time.